Alright, just going to make a video showing how Calvinists like to twist Acts chapter 13 verse 48 to once again prove that man has no free will in the context of salvation. And once again, they take this verse completely out of context. So let's look at the passage. Acts chapter 13 verse 46 to 48 to read it in context. Okay, let's go there. Acts chapter 13 verse 46 to 48. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the, to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, as many as were ordained to eternal life believe. So they home in on the, oh, ordained to eternal life. See, they were chosen for salvation. See, again, verse, verse 48 is often twisted by the Calvinists to teach that God chooses who gets saved and God predestines who gets saved and who doesn't. The context of verse 48 is in contrast with the verse 46, where the Jews, quote, judge themselves unworthy of eternal life. And in verse 47, the apostles turned to the Gentiles in a fulfillment of the prophecies in Isaiah chapter 42, verse uh, 6 to 7, and Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6, about the Messiah being a light unto the Gentiles. Let's look at the verse there. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 6 to 7. See, the Calvinists, they, they, a lot of them don't cross-reference scripture. They isolate verses here and there and cherry-pick verses to base their doctrine off of. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 6 to 7 I the Lord have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles to blot to open the blind eyes and bring out the prisoners bring out the prisoners from the prison and then that sit in darkness out of the prison house okay that was Isaiah 42 verse 6 to 7 Isaiah chapter 49 verse 6 it says and he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also I will I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends end of the earth. Okay? It's a prophecy. God ordaining eternal life to the Gentiles simply means he granted them the option of salvation after the, after the Jews rejected it in order to fulfill Isaiah chapter 42 verse 6 to 7 and Isaiah 49 verse 6. That's all that's saying. He's given them the opportunity and the option of salvation after the Jews reject it. It's not saying that he ordained them, meaning he chose them for salvation. He's ordained them eternal life, as in, now we're going to, because you Jews rejected it, now we're going to go to the Gentiles and present it unto them. And here's another thing, too. If God chooses who gets saved, what's the point even of preaching the gospel? What's the point of even presenting the gospel if God just ordains them for salvation? It's ridiculous. Calvinism is just falls flat on its head. In fact, evangelism itself refutes Calvinism. But also you should compare this with Acts chapter 26, verse 17 to 20. Really good scripture to cross-reference with Acts 13, verse uh, 46 to 48. Acts chapter 26, verse 17 to 20. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, sorry, notifications, whereupon, O King of Agrippa, I think that's how you say it. I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. So it's a fulfillment of that prophecy. Okay, This is in no way saying that mankind has no free will in the context in regards to salvation, or that God just chooses some for salvation. It's simply saying that God granted the offer of eternal life to the Gentiles after the Jews rejected it. My cat is doing some weird stuff. My cat is just making a big mess back there. Also, you should also compare this with Romans chapter 11, verse 11, and Romans chapter 9, verse 30 to 33. Let's turn there. Romans chapter 11, verse 11. It says, I say that... Cat... It says Romans chapter eleven verse eleven. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? That they that they should fall. Sorry, God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. That's what's going on there. The, the salvation that was offered to the Jews, 
because they rejected it, it was now offered to the Gentiles, and guess what? They received it. That's what's going on there. And how is this uh, salvation received? Romans chapter 9, verse 30 to 33. And of course, Romans 9 is a, a text that Calvinists like to twist, and, and I've done a video refuting that as well. Romans chapter 9, verse 30 to 33. What shall we say then, that the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, righteousness hath not attained to, to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone, and as, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone, and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. What's going on there? How is how is salvation how do you get salvation? By faith. Why why was the Jew why did the Jews not have salvation? Because they were self righteous. They wanted to attain their salvation by works of the law. And he's saying that, you know, that the Gentiles they received salvation because they had faith, the righteousness which is of faith, a good verse on imputed righteousness. You know, our righteousness is, is by Jesus Christ, not our own. But the, the Jews, Israel, says they followed after the law, not after the law of righteousness, because they wanted to do it by the works of the law. Also, Romans chapter 10, verse 3 talks about how they're trying to establish their own righteousness rather than submit to the righteousness of God. But so what it's saying there is that because of their rejection, salvation was offered to the Gentiles, the option, and they had faith. You see, again, if God preordains pre you for salvation, there's no point of even preaching the gospel to people. You know, and there there are some Calvinists that actually will, will you know, some of these hyper Calvinists that will literally say, "Well, I, I don't go out and preach the gospel because God just chooses who gets saved." That simple. Now, most of them don't believe that, but there are some out there who actually will not even go out and preach the gospel or do any work for God because they just think that, well, God will just choose who gets saved. So, that's where Calvinism leads to. So, don't don't be deceived by Calvinism. They are basing their main doctrine off. Uh, scriptures isolated out of context. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.